to see. It is our interview of the day. Without question, Jim Bianco, president and macro strategist at Bianco Research, has really taken territories here to say disinflation is not in order. We'll see some form of leveling in inflation and then perhaps an increased inflation and with that, higher interest rates. Uh, he is with Bianco Research. Jim, uh, the call is extraordinary and now people are really beginning to pay attention. Put a when on it. What is the timeline you perceive to when we'll see the shock of higher interest rates? Well, start with inflation. Um, you could actually make the case that the year-over-year -year level of inflation bottomed in June when it hit 3.0 percent. It's at 3.1 now, and probably later this week when we get the December number, it'll probably go to 3.2 or 3.3. And that might be essentially it, that the inflation rate has found its low or its last mile is here or very close to here. And if it starts trending higher, I think then you'll start to see interest rates respond in kind because what they've priced in is this idea that we're on our way to 2 percent. We're just quibbling about when we're going to get mm -hmm. there, not if we're going to get there. And if we're starting to go the other way, I think that yields start going higher. Doesn't necessarily mean the Fed has to raise rates, but the idea that the market's got five rate cuts priced in, right. six last week, five now, that might be wildly optimistic. When the price theory and the ambiguity of higher interest rates, does that come with better GDP or worse GDP? No, I think it comes with better GDP, and I think that that's part of the issue here. Uh, you know, 2023 is not quite in the record books yet. We haven't gotten the fourth quarter, but it looks like a 25 to 3% year. That's at least trend, if not above trend growth. We're looking at, if you believe the Atlanta Fed, and it's as good as any other measure, about a 2.5% fourth quarter after a 4.9% third quarter. So we slowed from the third to the fourth quarter from way above trend to probably trend or slightly above trend. So there is no soft landing in this economy right now. I mean, that's kind of wishful thinking. And the employment report on Friday really underscored that. It's not a maybe an outright boom right now, but it certainly isn't a soft landing, and that will feed into it. In Jim, let's get into the data on Friday. Can I just jump in? Because it looks sure. strong on the surface on a headline number, but going beneath the surface, this from Anna Wong of Bloomberg Economics, a drop in labour fa force participation, more people taking part-time work for economic reasons, a decline in working hours. The ISM was just dreadful. Are we not putting a lot of weight on the December data? How would you read some of that? Well, two things. First of all, I think that you know, we have to be careful with December, January. There's a lot of seasonal factors that come in at the end of the year that kind of skew those numbers a, a lot. Second of all, I think what we also have to look at is whether or not the nature of work has changed. I know I've been on here many times talking about we are in a remote work world right now where people go to the office three days a week, maybe four days a week, no longer four or five days a week. And that has changed a lot of things about the outlook for work and how we work. And really what we might be seeing in some of that data with like the increase of part-time jobs is the nature of work is changing as opposed to that it is a sign necessarily of weakness. You certainly don't see it in other numbers like the initial claims number in the low 200,000s. That's typically a number over the many years that we've been watching it is a number that is associated with a very strong labor economy. So at this point, Jim, you were saying that yields could go up, you could go down, you could end up in this trading range. How important is CPI coming up on Thursday to really indicate whether this was just really noisy data that we got at the end of last week or whether this was showing, particularly ISM services, some real weakness? No, I think it's important because this month, we should have maybe a small drag on from gasoline prices. In November, you know, there was a tremendous drop in gasoline prices, which is why the number was just one-tenth. But now that we didn't have quite the drag on gasoline prices in December, we could get a true idea of what the underlying trend of inflation is without the, the noise of gas. And I think what we'll find is that that underlying trend might be close to where we are on a year-over-year -year basis, somewhere around 3%. Remember, we're still at 4% year-over-year uh, on core inflation as well.
John was mentioning earlier uh, the budget deficit. And that's another kind of looming question hanging over just the inflation discussion in terms of where yields are going to be. And uh, we were talking about this report. He mentioned J.P. Morgan, which showed that most of the tax revenues the U.S. brings in in the next couple of decades are going to go to entitlements and to interest payments. That was based on an assumption uh, that 10-year Treasury yields would be around 3.3 percent, or actually benchmark overnight rates would be 3.3 percent in 2033. Do you think that that kind of projection is realistic or do you think we are looking at a 4% world for the foreseeable future? No, I think we're looking at higher rates. I think the 40-year bull market in bonds ended in 2020. We are in a, a trendingly higher environment for the next several years. Now, we could have a slowdown in the economy in a two or maybe a three-year rally in the middle of it, but I think we got to start thinking about interest rates trending north as opposed to trending south. That ended, like I said, with the pandemic a couple of years ago. And as it does, we're going to see, especially interest costs, become a bigger problem. They just went over $1 trillion on a yearly basis that the government is going to be paying in interest, which is more than the Defense Department budget right now. And that's not going to get any better, at least in the next couple of years, because more debt's going to be rolling off at lower coupons and going to be reissued at higher coupons. We've been talking about this now for the best part of a decade. You'd be the first to say, Jim, I'm sure, that we need a certain dose of humility around this particular topic. But the day of reckoning, just how far away is it, Jim? Surely you can't remain on this trajectory. What does that day of reckoning look like? Uh, it looks a lot like what you saw, la um, I should say, now in 2022 in the UK with the uh, gilts market and the LDI, the liability driven investment problem. When the market decides that the day of reckoning is here, when the UK put out a budget that the market didn't like, it forced it to change. Well, the markets will do that too. So if we're going to keep borrowing debt and we're going to keep spending and we're going to keep running up you know, interest costs, at some point, it's not going to be a commission by the government that's going to fix it or a change in the leadership in the White House. It's going to be the market that's going to just put its foot down and say, enough, this is going to stop now, like it did in the UK in September of 2022. Now, whether that's next month or 10 years from now, that we could debate, but I do think it will be the market that will make that change. Jim, the UK clearly didn't have the luxury of acting recklessly. Do you think the US does to any extent? Well, it has because it's the reserve currency. And as long as it is the reserve currency, it is afforded a latitude that no other country is afforded because everybody else has to own our debt or own our currency because that's what trade is done in and that's what is the dominant currency that uh, runs the world economy. But if we were to lose that status, and to be clear, I don't think we're about to lose that status anytime soon because there's a lack of an alternative, then, yeah, that luxury will go away. But for now, we still have it, but we can't be abusing it because we're just going to force the day that it ends to come much sooner. Huge numbers. Jim, great to catch up, sir. It's good to see you. Jim Bianco there Thank you. of Bianco Research on the possibility, the potential of resetting interest rates higher all over again. If you're just joining us, this is where